Brothers and sisters, today I just wanted to say a few words, especially in English, because I think it has a lot of relevance to those of us who have children, and especially young children. We celebrate today the feast day of Saint Sophia and her three daughters, Faith, Hope and Love. And those daughters, the oldest, was not any older than 12 years old when she gave her body to be given for martyrdom. And her other sister about 10 and the youngest one about 8 years old. They had about 2 years difference. And it was during the time of the persecutions that that family, Saint Sophia's family and her three daughters were found and caught wine, being accused and wanting to be punished for one reason. And that reason was because they were Christians and they believed in our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. You see, it was criminal to be a Christian. It's almost like the times then and now are very similar. And you're going to say to me, Father, well, I'm free to practice my faith. Yes, we are free to practice our faith in a way, okay? But so long as we keep that to ourselves, so long as we don't expose that to others, so long as we keep that hidden, so long as our Christianity becomes something private and not something which is public. But let me tell you something and let me remind you something. That Christ said to us to go to the ends of the world and to preach his gospel and to baptize people in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And he says those who hear that word will and, and be baptized, will be saved and have eternal life. Now these are the words of Christ. And today we have this understanding and this type of logic that just because we were born and baptized into our orthodox faith, then that makes us orthodox Christians. And that orthodoxy does not really belong to any other type of people or race. But the word of Christ, his gospel for us is absolutely salvific for all people. And the reason why I'm saying this is because Saint Sophia knew this very well. When she grounded her children, her three daughters, in the very faith that Christ gave to us, she laid very strong and firm foundations. And she told them the dangers of being a Christian and of professing the Christian faith. But these three young women were not afraid of the dangers. And so when they were caught practicing their Christian faith and they were brought before a tribunal to be judged, imagine, imagine that. Imagine being taken to court today before a judge so that you could be judged because you are a Christian. This is what happened, not, not to adults, not to adult women, but to minors, to little children. One was, the oldest was not even a teenager yet. Taken before a judge and to be tried. And their mother watching from a distance the trial, seeing that the judge was trying to persuade them to change and abandon their, their Christian faith with flatteries. By saying, why do you want to be Christian? Turn to us. Turn to the gods that we believe in so that you can have everything. You are young children. We can give you anything you want. What, you, what could you possibly want? And one by one, as those young girls were questioned, none of them succumbed to the temptations that were being offered to them by the judge. All three of them stood boldly and confessed that they are Christians and nothing that they can offer them could 
persuade them to change their mind. So they took the girls one by one. They began to beat and to torture them. Now imagine this. Imagine you're watching something like that face to face. Sometimes when we read them in the lives of the saints, we don't really understand how severe it was to present yourself and to confess yourself as a Christian. Here we see video footage of two men fighting or of someone kicking someone to the ground and we feel disgusted. Imagine now watching these three young women, three young girls being beaten and tortured because they refused to denounce or renounce their Christian faith. And even more so from a distance to have this courageous and bold mother standing and watching them and saying the whole time, do not renounce your faith. Christ is everything. Prepare yourselves for eternal life. And listening to their mother's cries, not the wailing and the howling of a mother that is hurting because she's seeing her children suffering and wanting them to be let loose, but the supplications of the mother to stand firm, strong and courageous in front of pain and in front of danger. Today, I think that most of us would think that Saint Sophia was insufficient to be a mother. Most of us would look at her and say to her, you are a cruel, barbaric woman. But the church today honors her not only as a saint, but as a great martyr of the church, even though she herself did not offer her, her body for torture, even though she herself died on the graves of her daughters and not dying a martyr's death. But she is honored as a great martyr of the church because as she entered the kingdom of heaven, with her daughters, after she had succumbed from grief on top of their graves and died there, she presented her daughters before the throne of Christ. And a mother, she presented her own pain and grief of having to keep them strong in the faith, her own faith, her own courage, and so the blood that her daughter shed is seen as equal to what Saint Sophia went through watching her daughters suffer for the faith. I'm not sure how many of us would be able to endure something like that. And thank God we're not living in times when we go through physical torture. But I want us all to reflect deeply on the person of Saint Sophia, on her as a mother, as a parent. And I want us all to reflect deeply on these three young girls and ask ourselves, are we cultivating our relationship with Christ? And more importantly, are we helping our children stand firm and be firm in the faith that has been given to us? Do we care enough about our, our children to give them not what is temporal but what is eternal? Do we care enough to educate them not only in the education and in the wisdom of this world but to give them the wisdom which is godly and divine. Do we care enough not only to prov provide them with the joys and the comforts of this life, but to train them and establish them firmly in the joys and the comforts of eternity, which we know are holy, bring us to holiness. Just these few things, brothers and sisters, bringing to mind, I pray that all of us cultivate 
our strength so we can have the patience and the faith of the saints so that we can have the shining example of Saint Sophia the mother and great martyr and her three daughters faith hope and love so that we can establish a kingdom here on earth within us within our home within our church and a kingdom which will last eternity with the pleasure and the joy of our Trinitarian God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the intercessions and prayers of Saint Sophia and her three daughters be a shining, be a strength to us to continue to fight the good fight and to endure and gain the pleasures of eternity.